Good afternoon. My name is Christopher McClung, and this is the CTE Teach podcast, and I'm your moderator for this podcast, and we are discussing um, what we did as far as creating a hybrid training session for all of our brand new teachers last week. And so we thought it would be cool for us to get together, share some resources of how we did a, a both in-person and online training, and just all the nuts and bolts of that. But first, I have the fantastic panelists with me um, who were influential in building and helping us develop this training. And so I'm gonna ask them, go around if you could tell us your name, what you do, and last week our training was based on a circus theme. So I'm gonna ask you to also please add, what would your circus talent be if you were a performer in the circus? And then we'll start um, with James, and then we'll just kind of let you guys go through, um, go around. So James, the floor is yours. Hi, my name is James Hattar. I am one of the community recruiters, teachers on assignment uh, with the Colton Redlands Ukaipa ROP. And my circus talent would be the musician in the background. I'm gonna take it from James. I'm David Allman, also a community recruiter, teacher on assignment. And my circus talent, Lion Tamer. I will go. My name is Ellen Sample. I'm a curriculum developer. I'm also a teacher on assignment. And um, let's see, um, the tight rope, rope walker. Okay. Uh, my name's Kathleen Quiggle. I support, I'm the program support specialist for Ed Services. I support everyone in Ed Services, specifically CTE Teach and um, TIP and Melissa Dix, all of it. Um, my my job would probably be uh, the clown. I just laugh. I mean, I always laugh. I get nervous, I laugh. So <laughs> it would have to be that. Awesome. And hi, everyone. My name is Alex Becerra. I'm an instructional technology facilitator here at CryRap. And then my talent would be strongman, just because I like to lift things and drop them. Nice. <laughs> and welcome back, Alex. Alex, this is actually your third time on here now, so it's good to have you back again. So I want to do more of the question asking and less of the of the talking. So let's kind of start at the beginning, and I'll let you guys feel free to jump in where you where you want to. What what was the what was what was this training, and and what did we do? Whoever wants to to hop in there. So this was our three-day TIP teacher induction program for new teachers to CryRop. They were here all three days, and our second-year teachers joined on days two and three. So it's a real deep dive introduction, immersion for them into all things CryRop, all things CTE, all things ROP, and just to give them some introduction to a lot of things they're going to hear and kind of set them off in the year on the right foot and also partnerships and building relationships that they're going to be able to utilize. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And Ellen, how would you say, what was the, basically the room set up? So we had 19 teachers. Um, how would you, how was the rooms set up and how was that accomplished in the world of COVID we live in? How did we accomplish putting 19 teachers together for a three day training? So the way the room was set up was that we had three separate rooms and within each room we had about seven teachers all spaced out, um, probably more than six foot apart really. Mm -hmm. And each teacher had their own supplies, their own yeah. snacks, we don't want to forget that, and, um, and their own laptops. Oh, wow. And so um, each room also had its own um, screen. And so teachers could actually see um, whatever lectures was, were going on on the screen. Now, there was also a separate room apart. So there was a fourth room, which was separate and apart from the teachers. And in that room, that room was used as a recording studio of some sort. And um, so basically, if, if a teacher came, well, not if, the teachers who came to, to, to you know, tell the other teachers about the experiences would actually record in this room and then um, through Zoom 
all the other rooms will then have um, the ability to listen to the lecture and, and even participate, which is really, really exciting because um, a lot of the new teachers were really, really excited because they could participate. Um, and then since this was all via Zoom, um, also we had um, some speakers doing it from home as well. Um, and so it was just really exciting. It really was, it, and it was very seamless. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so we had, um, yeah, so just as Ellen said, we had three rooms, six teachers in each room, and then one room that was for presenting only. Um, and then James, and so what we're going to do is as we're discussing these things, if you're listening to this on, on our, on our um, podcast audio versions, you'll be able to hear it. But also, if you go and watch this on our YouTube channel, I'm going to add in some B-roll, which means I'm going to just throw some pictures up of what we actually did as we're discussing. But James, can you talk to maybe the technical side as far as how the presenting room was set up? Yeah, sure. So basically, everybody was in the same building. You had the 19 teachers in the same building, only separated in three separate rooms. And as Ellen mentioned, uh, with safe distancing between each table. So each uh, teacher had their own table. Um, each one of the rooms had their own projector in which everything was put right onto the projector or a TV screen in this case. And so you had cameras pointing into the teachers. So the guests and the um, superintendent, any, any messaging that was happening in the main studio room, if you want to call it a studio, uh, was being beamed through Zoom into these rooms. And then you had David, Ellen, and myself as moderators. So if teachers had questions, they can either talk directly into the camera uh, or we can uh, ask the questions on their behalf, whether we're using a chat feature or the microphones on the cameras are actually very, uh, very well based as far as the microphone. So I'm holding one of these cameras up here you guys can see it. So a camera like this, your basic webcam with its microphone in the room is pretty powerful. So if you have this pointed at the teachers, they could be able to speak from where they are at their desk without moving. And the, the announcers or the lecturers will be able to under, uh, understand and hear everything they're saying. So basically we had everything in Zoom, even though they were all in the same building, separated, being able to watch everything that's happening and still be able to collaborate within their group and the other groups and communicate with the guest lecturers as well. Awesome. And Alex, you were one of our presenters. Can you maybe just share? So you had, of, of all the presentations we did, you guys had the longest one. So, and you get so much so that you added in a couple breaks with yours. So maybe can you just share like, what was it like? So the, so the way, the way the presenting, maybe discuss like what the presenting room was like, how you went about that and what it was like trying to present and teach teachers who were watching you from three separate rooms in a totally different building here on campus. It was interesting. I will say that it helped out that the days prior, I was able to walk into the rooms so I can physically, visually see how the rooms are set up so that when I was presenting from the boardroom here, our recording room, I kind of had an idea of what I was looking at and how the setup was, but it was definitely interesting. And mm -hmm. I missed your other question, I'm sorry. Just what, what was your, maybe some of the challenges or some of the, um, just what was the experience like, like having to see your presentation on the screen, but, the, but still trying to interact with them? Right. Well, a big challenge was you're talk, kind of talking to a webcam and a big screen, and you, you don't really see the teacher's expressions as you would if it was an actual physical presentation. You can see if they look lost, it's really hard for you to gauge whether or not they're following along or if they look bored. Visually, it was difficult. So I would just do my best to take pauses in between presenting uh, a particular slide or some content and just kind of just like wait, look at the camera patiently and kind of wait for a facilitator in the room to respond whether or not 
everyone was good to go and ready to move on to the next topic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of the things that I thought was fantastic for how teachers were able to communicate with us was this thing. <laughs> Um, and so, Mr. Aman, this came out of your brain. And for those of you who are who are listening to this but not watching this, have no idea what I'm holding up. So, David, maybe talk about this paddle in my hand, what it is, how you created it, um, and then just how this became like a seamless way of communication in our in our training. Let's talk a little bit about the low tech of the high tech training. <laughs> yeah. Chris is holding in his hand a paint stick, a paint stir stick. And on one side, it has a red yes circle, uh, just a Word document with some art inserted on it with the theme, circus theme. And the other side is red. So think of it like a signaling paddle. Mm -hmm. And it was used for a, an icebreaker on the first day just to show how you could get some consensus in a classroom or how you could do some informal assessment. And then without having a visual or audio capability really back and forth between the rooms or challenging the audio capability between the rooms, it became a way that people could signal whether they understood what was going on, whether they were ready to move on, if there were questions, if they needed to pause, anything like that. And it just kind of took on a life of its own as the couple of days went on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really, it was great. Because I know like Alex, you would ask like, hey, did you guys hear that? Did you guys understand that? And then everybody would hold up their paddles like yes or no. And it became a really quick like, oh, okay, cool. They got it um, without having to unmute and, and all that stuff. So, um, so first I want to kind of describe because I probably know this more than everybody who, because I helped put together was how the presentation room was set up and then we'll get into the rooms themselves. So the way the room was set up, and again, we'll have some B-roll of, of these images, is we had a big screen touch, I don't know what it is, a touch computer screen. Um, that's like what, like James 65 inches? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's about 65 to 75 inch. It's, it's a basically a tablet that's as big as a HD TV screen. Yeah. And uh, you can either touch the screen to use it like you would a, uh, an iPad. Mm -hmm. And basically it also has a camera built in and uh, we just connected speakers and microphones. Yeah. And basically you set it up like you would a computer only when you're presenting, it becomes very helpful as you're watching all the rooms. So yeah. you can kind of get a gauge of the audience and so on. Yeah, exactly. So that's what we had is we had, we were running Zoom off this big 65 inch T monitor essentially is what it is. And it runs just like a normal computer. And then we set up a Yeti microphone, which, um, which allowed for the audio to kind of be broad for um, anybody who's standing in front of it. Then we put some, some studio lights up, which, um, help with the with pe being able to see who was presenting and then we used at first we tried to use a normal webcam um, but then found out really quick that you had to stand like this close uh, really close for anybody to be able to see you and if it was if you were too far away they couldn't really see you that well so then one of our other IT uh, instructional technology facilitators um, Rudy grabbed a conference camera out of the closet which gave us that really wide um, angle so that you could see the person literally from top to bottom, um, head to foot. And so that I felt that worked really well. And then like we said, we kind of did that and presented it through Zoom to the three rooms. And that was just the, the setup. And like I said, we'll, we'll show some B-roll of those images. But now I wanted to ask, and then we're gonna get to you in a sec, Kathy. Um, Kathy. Um, now I want to ask is once our presenters were presenting and they, they each had their own laptop in the room, you three that were in the rooms moderating, what was what was the the collaboration? Like what was the the I guess the attitudes or the the personality of the rooms one with all of this going on? Chris, before you get that that far, I'm gonna say that we were also then presenting in front of a circus backdrop created here yes. at Cryrop. And if you want to imagine essentially a green screen. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a step and repeat that Chris smartly thought, let's cover this with some red and white 
turned out to be a striped tablecloth, <laughs> vinyl tablecloth. Yeah. Talk about the magic of television because Chris had us present it under the big top. It looked great. It might not have looked real sharp and polished in the studio, yeah. but on camera, it knocked it out of the ballpark, knocked yeah. it out of the big top. Uh, I, if you want to kind of envision like I'm presenting the weather on the weekend news, mm -hmm. think of it that way. Um, I sadly discovered that that childhood dream of present being a weatherman, it's just not going to work oh. out. Oh no, no, no. That's not um, too late. Uh, it, it's, it's years too late. <laughs> I'd have the storm going out to the ocean and, and you know, just, it wouldn't be good, but it really solidified the theme um, and carried the theme across to the rooms and gave the sense of you were still in the same area. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, same theme. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So what was the, the collaboration like with the teachers and what was their, what was their, like I said, just kind of their personality or, or their emotions as they were going through this training for, you know, a couple of days and, and whatnot. So those, those three of you who were in the rooms, what was your experience? Well, well I'll go first yeah, go ahead. and I'll say that when we, you know, when one, the first presenter who was presenting from home started, I noticed that, um, Ms. Salman's class um, well, room was really excited and they, they had a lot of energy going. And so then I had to prep my room up and go, you guys need to kind of get in the ball game. You're making me look bad, you know? And then, <laughs> you know, then after that, then I, I could see Jeff, for example, um, you know, answer the question. And, and that's how we got the energy going. It, it almost became more of a, well, let's compete with the other room. Um, and that's how we got our energy going. Yeah. So before we move on, let's, so yeah, let me, I'll interject really quick. So we did have one presenter who, um, I'll just say they're probably, they're probably more high risk than, than our other presenters as far as health concerns go. And so her specifically, I did not want to bring her down to the main campus. Um, but she was again, able to seamlessly present her information and lead her class from her um, laptop at, or from her computer at home through Zoom, still basically using the same the same methods of what we were doing. So, yeah. So again, the other guys, what was your what was your experience like in your rooms with your crazy teachers? Well, I think it was important that um, between the three rooms that we had with Mr. Alm and Ms. Sampong, that you had people from CTE in the same style of industries or the same industry types so or pathways. So for example, my room was mostly the techie people from video game design, uh, graphic design, uh, digital video production. So you had all these people to working together and what was great about it is you had, well, of course the new teachers were nervous because this is a whole new thing for them. And with our two year, second year teachers, it's new because now we're looking at distance learning. But at the same time, when you got them together in that room, they were able to collaborate and share ideas and resources. The great thing about that, it expanded into the three other rooms when the teachers would go ahead and bring up some of the resources or some of the things that they did. And then the other rooms were able to hear and get some of that same resources and advice, which was really good. So mm -hmm. you still had that collaboration, which is really nice, even though technically, you know, some of the rooms were all separated, we're all beaming in through Zoom, but the collaboration was still there. Of course, the nervousness of being a new teacher is always going to be there regardless. Yeah. And how about you, David? I would say you probably have the most rambunctious room. How was... <laughs> How was your room? Really? I um, loved them. They were, they, anytime you said something or did, did a magic trick, like they were just laughing and yeah, they were a lot of fun. They, well, I think I had to kind of put on that old teacher hat of how am I, how am I going to keep them involved and stimulated and part of the mm -hmm. conversation. So maybe I was doing some of those teacher tricks, but I think I also had some people who were very active and at times were telling me, well, turn off the mute. We want to participate. So they were real anxious and wanted to be part of the conversation. So they, um, 
they had to teach me a couple things as well too, perhaps on the Zoom and the settings and the views as well too. So uh, some, some give and take for sure, I'd say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and now that you mentioned that, that's what's interesting is I thought we would have to stay on mute the entire time we did this. And we found out really fast that we could just unmute and the camera really wasn't picking up a whole lot as far as presenters go. Um, so, so that was cool. That's a good point. We we had rehearsed it a little bit, but mm -hmm. we found out some stuff early Tuesday morning into mid morning Tuesday morning that got us to do some things differently as well too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I think it definitely helped uh, planning everything all in advance. So having IT together uh, with the setup and then being able to practice everything all at once. So b making sure that room A was able to hear everything that was going on in room B and C and so on. And then back to the main uh, studio, if you want to call it that, and making sure that everything was working, sound was working, cameras were able to pick up people and the microphones were able to pick up some of the voices and so on. So all, all that planning days in advance really was helpful. So it made the process smoother as it went along. Yeah. So if there, were, if there was any issues, which actually I don't recall any issues happening the day of or as the days progressed, that uh, we were able to solve it, you know, pretty quick because mm -hmm. we, we pretty much knew the whole uh, setup in advance. Yeah. So speaking of rooms, can do you guys want to discuss like how we maintained a clean atmosphere as well, sanitation and all that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we went ahead and disinfected. We made sure that any tables that weren't originally from the room that we we're using, that everything was sanitized uh, you know, pretty much the day before and then the day after. So basically uh, everything was sanitized. Every um, teacher who had a table had their own table and they had their own set of hand sanitizers, masks, we had gloves, we had everything situated. We also had cleaning stations when they entered the room. So uh, we made sure that we sanitized before and then we sanitized after uh, each session. And then teachers, uh, whatever laptops that were uh, given, they stayed with the same laptop. So this way, no one else used their laptop, no one else used their bins or anyone used any of their uh, utensils or tools that they had. Um, so that definitely helped. Of course, everyone's wearing masks and, and we had extra masks and gloves and anything else that they needed. Yeah. So all that in advance, it, it helped to make them comfortable. I didn't really hear any complaints or people really freaking out of the fact that they're in a room with maybe six people separated. So there was a lot of room. You definitely don't want to do this in a small space. Right. So you want to be able to move everything around so uh, basically everybody felt really safe. The, and this is where Kathy comes in. Lunches were individually boxed. So there was uh, nothing as far as sharing or touching other people's food. Um, so a lot of that comes into play. So I, th I think everybody felt really comfortable the mm -hmm. whole time. Um, I know I did too. So it was, it was good to have everybody together. And also at the same time, they felt that they were safe. It was a safe environment. Yeah. So huge applause, Ms. Kathy. Thank you so much. Kathy, share with us, how did you keep 30 people fed <laughs> in the middle of COVID in person? What would you do? Uh, that, that was really a challenge. Um, just communicating that with uh, vendors of uh, the restaurants, um, Although they have been doing that. So they were probably a lot more used to ordering or the orders coming in that way that wanted everything separate. Um, a couple of them actually put the names of the teachers on it and that helped a lot. Um, just thinking of every, every piece. Okay, the utensils individually wrapped, you know, wearing gloves to hand them out to the employees and um, that was, it was a challenge, 
It was a mm -hmm. challenge. Um, in the past, we would just purchase trays and everybody could just get what they wanted. Didn't have to be so entailed. Um, the survey that I sent out to the teachers was um, a lot more detailed than what was done in the past mm -hmm. because everybody had their, their own meal, um, breakfast, lunch, and um, the snacks were a little bit random, but they each had their own snack mm -hmm. container with their name on it. So nobody would be um, getting those lost or anyone else using that, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I even forgot about that as well. So yeah, we gave them snacks every day. How did we go about doing that? Uh, the night before, uh -huh. um, we had so many snacks and we just put them in the containers mm -hmm. on their, their desks and make sure that they had a little bit of everything. Salty, sweet. Um, yeah, there was a good mix of uh, snacks and breath mints. <laughs> hard candies, everything, mm -hmm. so. And all of it was like packaged. Yes. Cookies yeah. and chips and all that. Yeah. So. Water, soda, right. juice, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Even coffee, how did we get by with giving people their coffee in the morning? Um, the Kruig, uh -huh. uh, we had a, a Kruig in each uh, room um, and the supplies of that, the cream or the sugar, uh, to make sure that was taken care of. And thank you to those who donated their Keurig, James, um, <laughs> so that could that could happen. The nice the nice thing about the Keurig machines is that the pods are individual, mm -hmm. so basically you don't have to touch coffee grinds or anything. Uh, creamers were individual sugar packets, the whole thing. So when it comes to the safety, um, it was really simple just to put in a Keurig pod uh, of either the coffee or the hot chocolate or whatever else was provided and uh, very little contact with, um, with touching anything else or, or surfaces because the Keurig machine pretty much does it all for you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it came in really handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah did a fantastic job keeping us fed, keeping us healthy and safe. Again, I didn't run into really any um, issues either. I remember like the first day we had more trash than we had anticipated because the trash cans we had in those rooms were getting full really fast because everybody had individual stuff and boxes and whatnot. And so I don't know if you guys noticed this, but I ended up having like giant trash cans in each room that they started, we had, and then we threw them, you know, got rid of them every night and whatnot. But that's the only thing I can remember, like, oh no, we need more trash cans. Um, but other than that, I thought it, I thought it went really well. Um, so I wanted to ask two more, and then if there's anything else you guys wanted to add, but um, once, once the presenting was done and the teachers had time to collaborate. So they worked on like their syllabus together. They worked on their lesson plans. They worked on some Google Classroom stuff. What was it like from your guys is just kind of watching the teachers, what were those collaboration times like, even though they were spread out you know, against different rooms and from each other? How, how were they able to collaborate? Even separated by tables, for example, I had the four middle school teachers, but they kind of formed an L in the U of the room. Mm -hmm. So they were positioned so that they weren't talking over other individuals. And all four of them bring a lot of ideas and a lot of creativity. So some of it was just harnessing some of those ideas and how they were going to um, start the school year. Also, uh, when we were doing lesson planning, even before we got into it or they had their collaboration time, we had the introduction, and then we even spent time talking about just what the first days of school were gonna look like and what would they be able to achieve. And just we had more discussion before they went into that collaboration time as well too. Um, so almost some transition time to getting into it. Um, I think a lot of people brought ideas as well too into those collaboration sections where um, things we hadn't even thought of so that they were already on the way. Yeah. Very cool. Anybody else? And, and I feel as if everybody was willing to share. Um, it was really, really interesting to see that 
um, the teachers who were teaching the same subjects, you know, at first sort of collaborated with each other first. Um, and then once they realized that there were newer teachers, you know, in the room, they were just ready to share everything they had. I mean, they, they, they were they were like, yeah, I have questions and I have this and I have that. And the teachers were just given resources, really. That, that's one thing I noticed that they were sharing different resources with each other. Um, and you take somebody like Meg who had the check-in you know, form and was just so willing to share. Um, we had an adult ed, um, adult school, sorry, teacher in our, in, in our room. And so you would think that just because, you know, she doesn't teach high school, you know, they'll treat her differently, but that wasn't the case at all. Everybody was, would pause and, and, and ask what can they do to help her with. Um, so it was really, really collaborative. Um, yeah. and, and so I, I will add, um, that was a strategic place, placement as well. So another thing we did is we did assign, we did assign seats and we did assign rooms. And so speaking of Ellen's room, so, so Ellen had more of like the law enforcement people in her room. And one of the things we did was we set up so that, so I had two law enforcement teachers that were returning as second year teachers. And then I had one who was, this was his first year teaching and he was brand new. So we strategically set it up so that the new teacher was sitting in that L, the new teacher was in the middle and the veteran teachers, veteran all two years, um, were, were on the out, outsides of it so that any conversations they were having were being passed through that first year teacher in the middle of both of them. So mm -hmm. some, some strategic chess stuff like that, but definitely I think added to, to the collaboration. So yeah, it was cool. Um, so the last, last question before we kind of close up is, Alex, I wanted to ask you again, because you had kind of the, the longer, the longer se section of the training, and honestly, the, probably the most technical part of the training, because you spent a good two hours teaching brand new teachers Google Classroom. Um, some of them already knew it, but a lot of them, this was their first time getting into it. What was, how did you guys go about teaching Google Classroom from Zoom in one room, but then needing to go and help teachers in person in another room. So how did, how did that play out? So I was really fortunate to have Wendy McClung as my co-presenter uh, co with me as well. So what we did is we broke it down to two sections. I had the first part of it and she had the second part of it. And while myself was kind of speaking and presenting on a particular part. She was in the room and one of the rooms in between, actually in between one of the rooms, but mostly in one room where we felt like the teachers needed the most help and assistance. And then vice versa, after the break, we switched out and it ended up working out really well. And whenever I had some gaps, Wendy did a really good job by filling in the gaps through the audio, through the Zoom session on her room and vice versa. So overall, it was just a really good presentation. Yeah, yeah. I think and it also has, helps. Go ahead. I'm sorry. As I say, it also helps uh, with the fact that you had three moderators who are <laughs> veteran teachers who are able to also assist if need be uh, while Alex or Wendy were going to other classrooms. Yeah. So um, it, it definitely becomes a team effort right. uh, when you have uh, the moderators and the presenters all on board and assisting whenever they can, just yeah. being it, just being ready to step in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. And so, Alex, you guys presented your training the the morning of the third day. The second day, you guys came in and gave them a survey. And what? How did that survey aid in what you were teaching? That survey really gave us a better gauge of how how much experience each of the teachers have. And unfortunately, or fortunately, it was buried. <laughs> so from that information, me and Wendy kind of had to take a step back and be like, okay, well, what's, a, what's the best route to kind of better serve our teachers that we have in all different rooms? And for the most part, it was just still, the game plan was to go to the presentation, just make sure to inform the teachers in the beginning that, hey, we understand that some of you already are using Google Classroom. So this might be a refresher for you but please be open to uh, supporting the other teachers in the room and, and it ended up working out, working out really well. Yeah. So, yeah. Very cool. 
So from everything I'm hearing, um, what it sounds like is this took a lot of planning from everybody, all the presenters planning what they were going to do, the food planning, you know, what, what we're going to get, how we're going to get it packaged. Um, it took a lot of thinking through, um, but it also took a lot of us being, being flexible. So one of the things I, I, we, I forgot to mention was when we first tried to show a video, it didn't work because, because the videos were so lagged behind um, everything, you know, the videos in the room. So if I was show, so if I was presenting, showing the video from, from me presenting in the boardroom, it was lagged and behind in all the other rooms where some of the rooms, they were on different speeds. So you could hear like echoing between the rooms. And so how did we go about solving that issue? Should that come up? So Chris had front loaded a document with links to all the videos. And in each of the rooms, we had already pulled that up when we needed to step away from the main presentation, just clicked over there and played the video. And so we had, I should say, we had opened extra windows. So the video was already loaded and ready to go yeah. and was seamless, really was seamless and worked really well. And Chris, you're not giving yourself enough credit already for just all the pre-planning and down to the minute of what was going to happen at this hour, this hour, this 20 minutes, so that it did all run like a production. That's, that's my video production background. Um, it worked. It worked. And it, and it worked. And I'm trying not to, not to toot my own horn, but, but, and it, and we did get, get off. Like we had some presenters that went a little bit longer and some that weren't long enough. And it, behind the scenes, there was definitely some, like texting people, hey, can you be ready to be on in like 10 minutes, even though you're not scheduled for another 30, um, stuff like that happened. But again, it, it wasn't too bad, so. Okay. No, in the room, didn't even know that happened. Did not realize that even to this moment. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. One th and, and another thing I should talk about. So we also played music in each of the rooms and the way we did that was um, brought in a Crossley, record player which had an adapter a usb adapter on it plugged it into the zoom and the zoom picked it up as a second as like if it was its own microphone and so to play music in all the rooms you just threw a, a record on press play or i shouldn't say press play put the needle on the record and then if you heard the music stop that's because somebody had to run over flip the record to the b side and then keep playing it through but that's how we did music and all of that as well so how so kind of how i wanted to conclude this unless there's anything else that anybody else had anything they wanted to bring up or are remembering i can't think yeah. of anything off the top of my head uh, I, was ahead, gonna say, I was gonna say um with const always have brain breaks and icebreakers so yes. when it comes down to the planning down to the t also in advance double checking um your icebreakers and the brain breaks um the breaks were very important, especially since, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these days went pretty long. So uh, constant breaks and even giving the option for the teachers with, uh, with uh, going outside to have their lunch and we had benches and everything all set up right. for, for them to go out there. And so a lot of it was just down to the T of every little thing, including the breaks uh, and the icebreakers. And the little engagement and fun little games that they were able to uh, get together and know each other a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, good, good and, point. And I, I wanted to add that, um, you know, things may not necessarily run smoothly, you know, all the time, but it worked. Um, so there was a moment where I could hear the echo, you know, from another room in mind. So I just run and close the door. Um, there was a moment where a speaker has started speaking and the other room, was still on mute, you know, so it's just a matter of running to the other room and telling them, you know, the speaker is back on. And mm -hmm. so don't worry about the little things. It, it really does work yeah. together. Um, and as, as long as you pre-plan some of the bigger stuff, um, you, you it's, it's just going to work well together. Um, just, just everybody should just know to text each other or, you know, to just, just, 
get into the mix and and just resolve whatever they can resolve in the spur of the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's a great point. Thank you for saying that, Ellen. So yeah, we had everything planned, but we also had each other in a text box or whatnot you say on our phone. So so I could text all three rooms, say, hey, you know, we're back on or, you know, can somebody jump over and do this or blah, 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 or, or hey, you know, you're still muted, blah, blah, blah. So that I think helped. As well. I think I remember one time I was unmuted and I was talking really loud. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I believe James told me that, you know, there was a speaker presenter on. So yeah, well, and I had one faux pas as well. So one of our teachers, uh, luckily, I've known that teacher since he was in junior high. And so I, I sent him a text. And what's funny is I sent him a text. And I saw him look at his phone, but then not reply to me. But I could see all your all the rooms from Zoom, but I wasn't muted. So I'm like, this fool's ghosting me. You need to answer your text. But everybody could hear me saying that. And then I saw him look at the screen and then he looked at his phone and then replied back to me. And I was like, oops. So <laughs> I was in the room with you, Chris. That was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, let's put him on blast in front of everybody. So so kind of I just kind of closing conversation on how I wanted to wrap up is um, so we sent this out to all the teachers. Honestly, I had one teacher ask me, is this training going to be in person? And I said, yes. And then they replied, okay. And that was the only complaint or I shouldn't even say it wasn't even a complaint it was just a question that was the only time anybody asked me like are we doing this in person or are you doing this through zoom and I said it's in person but we're doing this hybrid thing so can you guys maybe speak to and this is how we'll conclude it what was what would you say the benefit of even doing some sort of hybrid thing like this like why didn't we just do it through zoom why did we bring teachers in and do this wonky you know, circus act of bringing everybody in. So maybe speak, what was, what was the benefits of doing this in your guys' opinion? I think the fact that they got to meet each other in person, whether it was passing in the hallway or they were in the same room, at least the human connection, mm -hmm. actually getting to see the person and know that they were not in this alone and it wasn't a head on a screen. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anybody else? I think it was also, maybe it's, it's the same, pretty much similar to what David just said, is the ability to exchange um, information um, amongst themselves. So I had teachers, new and new teachers in my room who were, who, who exchange information with, you know, I wouldn't say veteran teachers in David's room. And I'm not sure they would have been able to do that if this was not on ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus it was a different change of scenery with the constant Zoom meetings. And even though technically we were Zooming in our presenters, our presenters were still technically on our campus and was still able to provide some support, whether it was Alex or Wendy, or even calling on some of our, um, our old uh, Cryrop uh, TOA is to come in from their other job to come in and do something like teach like a pirate. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it's, you know, from my, from my point of view, being cooped up in the house as an educator um, gets, you know, a little stressful, probably some anxiety. And I think it was really good for, especially our second year teachers, not only to meet the new teachers, but also feel like, while well, I'm not stuck at home and at the same time we're safe and we're able to collaborate and meet new people. And at the same time, it was, it was fun too, because a lot of people were having a good time while they were there. Um, just icebreakers that uh, David uh, was doing uh, uh, brain breaks to get people off their feet um, instead of sitting the whole time and just moving around and get the blood flowing. Um, and I, it was, it was a really good thing. And I think, um, it, it makes it different than just sitting at your home, watching it and not really feeling that sense of the community that everybody had that day or those three days. It was really good. Yeah. One and of the exchanging things... stories. I heard them exchanging stories as well. You know, stories about teaching, stories about home life and that sort of thing. And I'm not sure that could have been done. Um, just... Uh, uh, 
I'm not sure that could have been done if it was just on Zoom. Mm -hmm. One of the sparks of joy of TIP is realizing that you're not in this journey alone and that there are others going through it as well too. And just garnering and getting little ideas about how to do things in your classroom. And I think with teachers entering a distance learning platform to begin the school year, they've seen two days of someone else teaching it or facilitating it and different things they can use and utilize in their online classroom as well too. And those little sparks or those little ideas will go out to three districts and countless classrooms and countless students. And that's the beauty and benefit of something like this. And I want to say that at the end of it, one of the teachers turned around to me and said, you know, I've worked in many places, but I must say I've never worked in a place where everyone is so warm and just so willing to help. And I think it's because of the little things that happened. I mean, that teacher had a thumb drive, didn't know how he was going to pull the information up. And so, you know, running to another room and trying to start another computer, um, another teacher's lunch, you know, Thought. We thought we had an order the right lunch, but just running around and rushing around and trying to figure out, you know, how to help that teacher. And so I feel that it would have been difficult to communicate our mission statement of helping teachers mm -hmm. if we had done this just on Zoom. It, yeah. it, all these little things help give them that sense of security that we're always here to help you and that it's not just something that we preach, but something we really practice. Well said. At well same said. time, they also got to meet not just the TOAs, but they also got to meet the people from the staff from other departments, IT, human resources, educational services, business office. So they got to meet and, you know, not just see a name to a face, but also get to meet them in person at the same time, understand what these different departments do and how they can benefit them and, and serve them while they're off-site at their school campuses and then be able to know who to reach out to if they need to. Yeah, that's true. All right. Well, very cool again. Yeah, so it's just that human connection is never lost. So um, it's always powerful. So that's it. Um, thank you guys so much for being a part of this. My hat's off to you. Kudos. Thank you so much. You guys are rock stars and pillars for everything that we do. So we had this one down. We only have like 10 more to go for the rest of the year to, to plan out. Um, and other than that, thank you for those of you who are watching and listening. Thank you so much for, for checking out this uh, CT Teach podcast, hybrid uh, PD and how we did it. And I would encourage you, um, just follow us on Twitter. We are at CTE underscore teach. And you can also listen to us on multiple podcast channels, including Spotify, iTunes, and SoundCloud, and obviously watch us on YouTube. So thank you. Feel free to contact us with any questions you have, um, any ideas that you might have, please leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And lastly, that was for you, James. And then lastly, um, we'll have some of these resources in the description um, that you guys can click on and check out and see what it is that we did. So all that being said, um, go have a fantastic year. Don't be afraid to be a little bit messy. Don't be afraid to try things that are new um, and, and just encourage you to, to go out there and be innovators and educators. And we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.